And a very good morning from Auckland, New Zealand on a beautiful day and a great time to be in New Zealand, particularly if you're in the technology sector. Over the course of the next 45 minutes, we're going to give you a sense of why New Zealand is the place to be. If you've got skills and you're looking to bring those to the technology sector, it's an exciting time to be in New Zealand. Okay, now we'd like to show you a short video about working in New Zealand. I think the key thing is to do your research and to have a good look around, try and try and form some networks. The more homework you can do, the smoother the transition will be. If you study the market well, it's easy to get a job in New Zealand. The outdoors life is, is great out here. There's a lot more space and the national parks are really accessible. Sort of work-life balance here, I think it's much better. Kiwis have their own way of, of doing things and which I think they're, they're more fun-loving, they're more, more relaxed. And Kiwis are so friendly as well, so we're thinking about growing our family here. There's lots of cultural diversity, so wherever you come from, you're bound to bump into someone else who comes from the same country you came from. The highlight of moving to New Zealand was the openness and the friendliness of the people. People think it's a long commute if you drive more than 15, 20 minutes here. Apartments all are very close by, so everything is easily accessible. New Zealand's become like a second home to me. I'd have to say it's a small country with really big personality. I'm saying to myself, man, what a good choice <laughs> made for your life. What a good choice. Exactly. Like every country around the world, New Zealand is a very exciting place to be if you are working in the tech sector. Uh, it is the fastest growing sector in New Zealand. Exports in this country have doubled over the last six years. And in fact, at $7 billion, this is a sector that is rapidly growing. Of course, its biggest problem, like every other country around the world, is not having enough people uh, in the sector. So uh, the ability to come and work in New Zealand uh, as a migrant is welcomed and there are plenty of jobs available here for you to consider as well as the chance of course to enjoy the country's wonderful lifestyle. So if you do have skills and experience check out the jobs board you'll see that the large number of jobs already placed there with more to... Now we're going to meet a number of New Zealanders who are very involved in the tech sector uh, people who have started their own businesses very successfully here, also industry experts. Uh, we'll also talk to Immigration New Zealand with uh, answers to your questions about visas and, and so forth. So we'll cover all of that uh, and allow you also a chance to put your questions via the questions board and, and we will give a response to all of those too as they come through. So do take part, do get involved and hopefully over the next 40 minutes you'll get a sense of the great opportunities that exist in the technology sector here in New Zealand. Okay, let's find out more about the scale and depth of the technology sector in New Zealand. And joining me now is Candice Kinzer, the Chief Executive of the New Zealand Technology Industry Association. Hi Candice. Hello. You're an American yourself and how does one end up in New Zealand? I am. I moved here nearly 17 years ago, uh, originally from Austin, Texas, uh, went to university in Hawaii and came down just for a one year or a two year working visa and a visit and loved it so much I ended up staying. Uh, over the course of those years I've worked for some high profile multinationals, Sun Microsystems back in the day, uh, Telecom and I've also started a number of my own technology companies that have been quite successful as well. Give us a sense of the, the size and the growth of the technology sector in New Zealand at the moment. Sure, the technology sector at the moment is third in terms of its contribution to New Zealand's economy. In first place is the dairy industry, which is well known worldwide for being one of the uh, biggest and best uh, globally. In second place is tourism, and I know that sounds a bit strange, but uh, tourism is counted as a major income generator for New Zealand. And in third place is technology, and that includes software, hardware, robotics, high-tech engineering and manufacturing, but it's also the fastest growing industry by nearly 16.5% compounded annual growth rate per year. 
Um, if you follow those calculations through, it will be the largest industry for New Zealand by 2020, which bodes really well uh, for everybody who's in the sector. But it's also one of the crunch points in terms of trying to generate that growth, uh, but not having enough people in the country to actually ensure that we can get there. So that's one of the reasons why we're very keen to bring down people who are interested in contributing not only their skills, but also learning a lot about this beautiful country and having opportunities of a lifetime. So Candice also, uh, this is a, a country that is used by multinationals around the world to test markets because uh, New Zealanders do like to take up new technology ideas, don't they? They absolutely do. And one of the interesting things that not many people know about is organizations like McDonald's and Facebook actually come down to New Zealand and launch concepts into this marketplace. Uh, for a number of reasons, one of which is the diversity of cultures. Uh, over half of Auckland's population is from somewhere else, an immigrant you know, outside of New Zealand. Um, we also have a tendency here to try new ideas and provide feedback, positive or negative, very on, a, on, on an easy basis. So where you may have some questions about, you know, do you like this or do you like that? Uh, Kiwis in particular are, uh, will give you feedback at face value. Candice, thank you very much for joining us today. Sure, thank you for having me. One of the big success stories here in New Zealand is a company called Orion Healthcare. And just before we meet the chief executive, let's take a look at the short video on the success the company has enjoyed. At Orion Health, we make software that um, is used within the health sector predominantly. Um, so we have a lot of systems that we build um, that go out there and really change the world for um, any patient and uh, clinician, really. And so all of the products we build are really about moving health information, medical information around in a way that it makes it easier for doctors to care for those patients, in a way that it makes it easier for the patients to care for themselves. We're actually the, the biggest software exporter in New Zealand. We use technology and we use technology in ways that it hasn't been used before. We're proud of what we do. Joining me today is the company's chief executive, Ian McRae. Hello, Ian. Hi. Now, you have enjoyed phenomenal growth. You're actually one of the largest employers in the technology sector. How have you managed to you know, maintain this, this growth uh, that, that you have, this growth yeah. trajectory? So, so, so in the last uh, five months, we've grown from 700 people to 1,100 people. Um, so as a company, we've focused on our, our health information technology. And these days, we're one of the leading vendors in that space. Um, that whole sector is experiencing huge change, huge growth um, with mobile health, um, genomics, all sorts of things, and we're just we're just riding riding that 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 wave of change. Forty billion dollar industry globally, and yet you've chosen to remain here in, in New Zealand. Why why that decision to to, to remain keep your base here? Uh, well, New Zealand has a lot of really good engineers and actually a lot of good engineers are coming to New Zealand as well. Um, uh, it's very entrepreneurial here, um, and uh, lots of talent in the universities, and um, um, the viewers may not be able to see it, but there's a lovely water outside here and boats on the water. It's just a nice place to live. And yet, we aren't really uh, graduating enough graduates here, are we? I mean, you, no, could, you, you, you still have a skills shortage. There's a real shortage. Yeah. There's a real shortage. Uh, so the universities aren't producing enough engineers. Uh, so if you go around our development shop today, uh, you'll find all nationalities. In fact, I believe um, there's 31 languages spoken in our office. I mean, our offices are pretty much the United Nations. And it's really good. And um, you'll, um, yes, Auckland is a very, very, very multicultural city. How many employees do you have, and, and where are the specific shortages uh, within, within Orion Healthcare at the moment? Uh, we're always looking for engineers. Um, never have enough engineers. Um, project managers, business analysts, um, um, occasionally salespeople. In fact, actually just about every single role. Um, and um, so there's, there's, there's shortages across, across the board. Uh, also, we have shortages in the very senior leadership roles as well. Um, and um, so, yeah, we're looking for most roles, really. Well, Ian, thanks very much for joining us and uh, good luck for the future. Mm, thank you very much.
time to look at large enterprise technology opportunities in New Zealand. Before I introduce uh, Kevin Anglin from IAG, let's take a look at a short video about IAG in New Zealand. Transformation at IAG New Zealand is uh, a significant shift in the way we do business. It, it's taking us from being a business that sells insurance to a business that puts customers at the centre of what we do. Part of how we execute this transformation is about building a world-class team. Uh, we're based in Auckland um, as IAG New Zealand, but we're part of a, a much broader group right, right across Australasia and Asia, which has a mission to be the world's most respected insurance company. Well, with me now is uh, Kevin Anglin from IAG. Hello to you, Kevin. Morning. So you're a, a very large scale business in, in New Zealand. When we look at the opportunities for those with technology backgrounds to come and work for a business like yours, what sort of opportunities exist? Well, I think um, scale is part of it, um, but I think in the IT community in particular, we're an organisation that does most of its IT work itself. So we're not a large outsource shop. Um, so we've got the full spectrum of software development, testing, business analysis, um, support of systems within the organisation, and then we move over to the infrastructure side, um, networks, uh, telecommunications, telephony, those sorts of things. So th there's a lot of breadth in, in the organisation because we've made some choices around how we will run our technology platform and our scale um, requires yeah, a diverse technology um, capability across the organisation. So Kevin, of course New Zealand is at the bottom of the world, how do you remain competitive? Well, um, you could compare a rugby team, bottom of the world, we stay competitive in business, it's no different. Um, so yeah, we do have to look overseas at what's happening um, within the market here. Um, there's a lot going on in the New Zealand economy. Um, it hasn't probably dipped as much as some of the others. There's a significant investment in business transformation. Underlying that often is technology transformation. So um, in a business sense, some of that activity simply is um, table stakes. You've mm. got to be able to remain um, competitive and agile to be able to deliver to what the business is doing. Yes, we're at the bottom of the world, but New Zealand's a great place to live. Um, and you know, you, we've got climate that's warm in the north. If you're a skier, there's plenty of snow in the south. So I think it's that that diversity, um, both from business perspective but geography, that allows us to remain competitive and attract good talent. And what about diversity of career options? Do they exist as well? Too? They do. So, um, and we we like to grow talent as well. So we, we like to bring people, and we set a pretty high bar um, in respect of attracting people to the organisation. But then we like to settle on career paths early, and and grow careers. So one of the things we talk to potential staff about is your ability to grow a career inside the organisation without having to leave. And being part of a corporate. Um, if you've got a technology career today, but, but through um, the work you do, you might find there's other parts of the business that are interesting to you. And we do see people leave the technology team to go to work in the business. We see the opposite occur. People starting a career in the business at IAG, and then through exposure to some of what we're doing in the technology space, move into the technology domain. What about developing uh, you know, work culture and work practices? How, how do you go about that? Um, again, being part of a corporate, IAG's had a, a very strong um, cultural change program running over the last five or six years in the technology space. We've been part of that, that's been good for us. It's moved us to a more constructive, can-do culture and then within the technology domain itself we've got a heavy investment in scrum practices, agile and scaled agile. So we, we you know, what we offer people is self-managing teams where um, you, to a large extent, you direct your own team and participate in the work you do, how you work and those sorts of things and it gives you that flexibility to move around across the IT community within the organisation and, and take on different types of work. So Ian, of course some people like to work on those big scale projects, so do, do they exist and what sort of capabilities are you looking for for projects like that? So I think um, being in the financial services sector, yes those big scale projects do exist. IAG, like a number of organisations, has got some um, old legacy technology that we need to move from. Um, so we've got projects underway already and more projects looking to start in the future that will see us move our 
business off its current operating systems onto new contemporary technology. Um, a wide range of skill sets, so from um, Java coders to integrators to architects, testers, um, developers, you name it, there's going to be a demand going forward for all of those skill sets. So Kevin, let's talk a bit about work-life balance for a company like IAG. How, how do you seek to create an environment where employees can actually enjoy that balance? Um, I think it's about not having too many rules and giving the individual the choice. So um, what that would look like in our IT team is some people would choose to start early, finish early over the summer so that they can enjoy the long evenings here in Auckland. Others would choose to um, work longer hours over fewer days to give them a bit of free time at the end of the week. You know, the, the important thing is fitting into the environment, working in a, in a nice constructive culture and delivering what our customers are asking us for. And if, if we can do that and provide flexibility, that's a good outcome all round. Kevin, thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you. One airline, of course, that stands out around the world is New Zealand's own national airline, Air New Zealand, uh, consistently rated as one of the best airlines in the world and also uh, quite a leader in the innovation and technology space as well too. And I'm very pleased to introduce Julia Rao, the Chief Information Officer from Air New Zealand with us today. Hi there, Julia. Hi, how are you? Of course, uh, you've seen this business grow substantially and of course, as I said, Air New Zealand have been quite a leader in the, in the technology field. How, how have you managed to maintain this innovation uh, within the airline? It's really important to us that we don't follow, that we, that we are leaders in terms of what we deliver to our customers. We don't typically go out and look at what other airlines are doing. We typically go out and look at what technology can enable us to do. And we also look at what some other areas are doing in terms of universities, um, banks, other institutions, you know, other transport and travel sectors, not just airlines, we're not purely airline focused. And so that helps us understand how we can perhaps solve a problem using technology in a different way. And we very much put ourselves in the shoes of the customer, that's important for us. Most of us are travellers ourselves, so it helps us to understand the journey and some of the pain points and how again we can engage technology to change that outcome. Of course New Zealand is fairly geographically isolated, uh, how do you deal with, with that isolation in terms of maintaining your connection with where the trends are heading in technology globally? Um, I don't think our geographical location is a constraint for us, um, it is a global economy. Um, the the success of New Zealand as a destination is incredibly important to our success. They're intrinsically linked um, and we recognise that and so a lot of the work that we do with partners is also to promote New Zealand as a destination, not just in New Zealand as a company. So that's a really important piece for us and it's part of who we are. You've been consistently rated in New Zealand as one of the most attractive employers to, to work for, so uh, obviously you know a lot about work culture. How do you define the work culture of Air New Zealand? Um, well, the work culture of Air New Zealand is very much around um, us being part of, of New Zealand, sharing that destination, making sure that we are uniquely Kiwi and that we offer that service to our customers. But in terms of information technology, what, what we want is we want engaged professionals who come to work every day to make a difference, to genuinely bring technology to the forefront of what we do. I feel like we're fortunate that our brand attracts really strong talent and that's important for us. So um, we're looking for particularly specialists in the digital and customer engagement space, people who are agile, people who can help us deliver quickly because that is part of our brand. And so again, that's important to us. And we also want people to come and share in the journey and have some fun along the way. What about uh, migrants moving to New Zealand and being able to fit into the New Zealand culture? How do you make that happen? Yeah, look, our, our community of um, IT people at Air New Zealand is incredibly diverse. We've, we've got a massive mix of ethnic cultures, um, of female to male, of, of 
um, age. So, so we're well balanced. And so I don't think anyone would walk in the door and feel like they didn't belong. Um, we've got some, as I said, we, we see ourselves as a community of people and that's really important to us. We're there to, for the common goal, but also to support each other and make each other successful. And so that community spirit lends itself really well to welcoming people in. One of our values is welcome as a friend, and we genuinely believe in that. That's for our customers, but also for our people. And people are what makes us successful. We can't do this without our people, and we recognise that that's part of what we as leaders come in every day to motivate and inspire people and make sure that they're well supported. So that's a big piece of what we do. So the other thing I would say on, on that question, Andrew, is that New Zealand is a fantastic place to live. You know, it offers so much for us, for our children. So, you know, what's not to love about living here and about working here? And you get the ability to get up to the Pacific Islands fairly easily as Absolutely. well. Absolutely. <laughs> it's, sh- it's a short hop to lots of great places, yeah. Julia, thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you, Andrew. Let me tell you about one of the big technology success stories in New Zealand, a company by the name of Zero that is creating beautiful accounting software. And just before we talk to Andrew Tokely from Zero, let's take a look at a video about the company first. The team behind Zero, if you look at it from a professional skills and capability set, it's a, it's a very broad um, set of skills that are required to actually bring a product like this to market and support and run it. We still have that small company feel of, well, this is the, the right thing to do and we need to do this for our customers, so who has the knowledge? And maybe it's someone who's been here for four years and works in customer care that you need to get on, on the team to figure out what's the right way to build this. And maybe it's you know the new guy that just started because he came, comes from an accounting background that specializes in that. And now I'd like you to meet Andrew Tokely from Zero. Hi, Andrew. Hi, how's it going? Tell us about your own story, how you ended up working for this uh, very rapidly growing company. Yeah, so so my background is very much in the technology space. So I started out um, actually as a statistician a number of years ago. And so it was actually through my interest in, 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 in that field that I discovered computers, analyzing data and doing surveys. And so that quickly uh, became a hobby. Uh, so I very much uh, latched on to the, the beauty of code, if you like. I, I used to love the patterns of it, the symmetry of it, the, the elegance of writing code that did what you wanted it to do. Uh, and so I turned that into a career doing uh, software development for a number of years, spent some time in Holland working uh, and doing it over there. Um, as I sort of went through the ranks of the technical stack, I became much more interested in the leadership aspects of the uh, industry. So I worked more with and alongside other developers to empower them. Um, I was a development manager at one point, uh, working with a large group of over 40 developers. Um, and at the time of moving on from that role, I was looking for a company that I thought would be cool to work for. And so I discovered Zero, and at the time they had just gone through a funding exercise, were in the press uh, with this up and coming um, vision out of New Zealand. And I thought, wow, that, that would be fun to join that ride. And boy, did I get that right. So, uh, so that was four and a half years ago now, uh, and I'm running the product team uh, that looks after the Zero business application as a product manager. It has become a very cool company, probably the coolest and the closest that we have to something like Google, I, I suppose. And uh, the, the culture of Zero has become a really exciting place to work too, hasn't it? Yeah, it's it's funny because um, we talk about uh, you know uh, our CEO Rod will often talk about Wellington becoming this uh, Silicon Valley of of down under, and so we we totally would love to see zero like businesses playing on the global stage, starting out in New Zealand, doing the, the you know using that as a platform for launching a global product in the way that we have, and there's really no barriers to doing that. You know, it's a global market now. Uh, it's the communication facilitates uh, working anywhere uh, and I think uh, more companies can and are leveraging that benefit um, and it's not such a disadvantage being down here anymore. What we get excited about is, is building beautiful product and in fact more than that we see what we're doing as creating time for people. So we like to think about our product 
freeing up time for businesses to do what they want to do. They don't want to be doing accounting. You know, accounting you know, is inherently a chore in, in a lot of ways. So we've done a lot to make it more beautiful. Uh, but we want to free up their time. We want to facilitate them talking to their accountant. We want to change the relationship they have with their accountant from someone who's like a compliance generating annual reports to somebody who can provide business advice um, to free up time for them to work on their business, uh, which is what they have the passion for, not doing their accounts. And it is interesting to think of accounting being beautiful, isn't it? I mean, you've, you've yeah. really done to accounting what Steve Jobs uh, did for Apple. And very deliberately, you know, from, ver from the word go, that was always a byline of what we wanted to do. And we haven't deviated from that at all. Um, and in fact, to the, or, you know, to the extent that the design team uh, is at the very front of every change that goes on in our marketing site, in our products, um, they have a huge voice in how we deliver the, uh, the functions that we put into the products. And so we talk about being a design-led company, and that's really important for, uh, for, for, to make sure that we, uh, we're thinking about the users up front, we're thinking about the problems we're solving, not the functions we're creating. So when we think of the opportunities for people to jump into the space, if, if, if the design is being led from the front, that must create some really exciting opportunities. Yeah, I mean, and across the whole company. So there's obviously opportunities in our design capability, so we're always looking for hot talent in that space. Um, but in fact, all areas of our of our business are growing uh, and across the entire product space, whether you're a developer, a tester, business analyst, a designer, um, and even within the de development space, uh, you might be a specialist in front-end development. And so that's obviously a big part of making beautiful, functional, dynamic software, is that that front-end development aspect is thought through really carefully. So if you're a gun in front-end development, then working at Zero is pretty much as cool as you can get because we do some amazing things uh, within the software to make it hum the way it does. Um, if you're more of a back-end developer, uh, then there's really good opportunities to work at scale in a way that's not possible with a lot of companies that you might work for. We've got huge volumes of data that we're moving around the place. Uh, we've got to make sure that's highly secure for obvious reasons. Uh, we've got to make sure that it performs well in terms of the experience that the user has doing things. So all those things make for really interesting engineering challenges. When you look at the growth of the company in the future, do you see this company just continuing to grow at its current pace? Well, it certainly hasn't slowed down yet. So, so when I started four and a half years ago, we were recruiting as fast as we could. We're still recruiting as fast as we can and are truly only limited by finding the right people fast enough. So we haven't yet reached a point where we have to slow down because we you know, have enough people. Uh, I certainly can see us over the next uh, 12 to 18 months um, almost doubling our capability in product space. Um, and that's an ambitious goal to find that many people to be able to do that. Uh, but that certainly we would have no trouble finding work for that, uh, that group of people. And plenty of career development opportunities as well. Yeah, certainly. So, so again, like my own career where I've gone from a very technical focus into more of a leadership management role, uh, we, we have those types of roles where you can take responsibility for a, a product or a group of engineers and people working on those products. And we also have created uh, people who want to stay on the technical track, uh, roles for them so that they can provi uh, provide technical leadership and thought leadership in those spaces without necessarily having to take on uh, the management roles uh, that a lot of people in this industry aren't, aren't uh, keen on doing uh, so we don't you know, we, we appreciate that and we provide opportunities for both types and just finally Andrew what excites you most about working for a company like zero look I, th I, th I mean it's pretty special to be working in a unique company from New Zealand, so there's a certainly a New Zealand pride going on there, so I love the fact that we're doing something special on a global scale uh, where our roots are uh, not an inhibitor, where it's not a problem that we're from New Zealand, and in fact in many ways it's an advantage. Um, and so to be part of that story, to be you know, the last company I worked for, I would tell someone I worked for that company and there would be a blank look on their face. Now I walk down the plane uh, wearing my Zero t-shirt and the stewardess is talking to me about, she's making jokes about Zero and you know, she knows about Zero and she's met Rod and yeah, there's very much a sense of people know what we're doing and that's, that's nice to be part of. Andrew, thank you very much for joining us today. Cool, thank you very much.
want to focus now on a great New Zealand technology success story. But just before we do that, let's watch this video all about the company called Unleashed. Unleashed is a cloud-based inventory platform enabling businesses to manage the entire supply chain process. So it's really powerful in giving you real-time information on how much inventory you have on your business, how your sales are tracking, and of course it passes through information to your finance site, so you have real-time information on how your business is performing. It's, it's amazing, amazing experience to, to, to spend your free time on the beach, because you can, it's close. And this has got an amazing culture, it's such, so vibrant. Our staff obviously utilise Takapuna as a location. We've got people stand up paddle boarding all the time. We've got a group of people who go for regular swims. We've got access to the local gym. And we promote that. We want people to have a relaxed environment and make sure you get, make the most of uh, your time while you're here. Because it's just awesome. And now let's meet the Chief Executive from Unleashed, Gareth Berry. Hi there, Gareth. G'day, Andrew. The story of Unleashed is a great one because it, it starts from a founder who leaves school really with no clear idea he wants to do and then he creates this very <laughs> successful company. Tell, it, tell us about how all that came about. Yeah, yeah. so the idea of Unleashed really came about um, by looking at uh, the way businesses were um, doing their inventory management and warehouse management. What we found was that whole process was really inefficient and no one had really disrupted that for 20 something years. So it was a really good opportunity there for a few smart minds to get together and see how we can redefine the whole inventory management process since then. So you're all about inventory management and the other aspect of your success is that you plug into the Xero software. So this is a really good integrated uh, system. So when we started Unleashed we were looking for a delivery mechanism uh, that was low touch and highly distributable. Um, around about the same time as we started, Xero uh, validated the cloud by going public uh, and basically showing the world that the adoption of SaaS was going to happen. So through that proliferation, we've obviously expanded globally on the back of Xero um, and really um, ridden the wave of the cloud. Of course, you've chosen to remain in New Zealand and that probably has a lot to do with the location of where you are. You can actually go paddle boarding at lunch, can't you? Yeah, um, there's lots of advantages of working in New Zealand. Um, obviously having uh, the ocean, the beach, um, you know, mountains for skiing so close to us. Um, the work-life balance around, around this country really makes sense to locate your IT hub in New Zealand. Um, most of my developers are swimming every single lunch, lunch break, um, building sand castles if they, if, if they like, or doing yoga on the beach. Um, having access to the beach really makes sense for us because doing things like paddle boarding as well during lunchtime and really mixing it up and having a bit of fun with our, with our workplace, um, it's just, it just very, very easy in our location in Takapuna. Actually, it's been called locally Tekapuna as well, too, renamed. I suppose that's just symptomatic of, of how much the, the local business environment is changing. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it, was, it was kind of an interesting uh, term, Tekapuna, and, and relabeling Tekapuna to that. And I guess that's just because of the vibrant community that we've created over there. Um, there's no less than 50 uh, tech companies, most of which are who are startups. Uh, and through, through obviously that network of people, we get together and we're sharing ideas and really globalising our businesses together. Um, so we call it Tekapuna. And fair enough. The, the opportunity to be part of this very fast growing entrepreneurial landscape must create opportunities as well too. Um, yeah, absolutely. There's, there's so many opportunities for companies like Unleashed to expand, um, particularly around the development, development resources and things like that that we have uh, in Takapuna or Tekapuna. Um, we're, we're always looking for, obviously, um, really smart people that have scaled massive uh, enterprise-grade applications or SaaS-based applications. Um, and so having that knowledge, obviously, and sharing, sharing the resources uh, certainly makes sense and helps our cause. How has the cloud changed the operating paradigm for a company like Unleashed? Yeah, so, so the cloud's really enabled us to be able to globalise our company from um, the day that we opened our doors. Our first customer signed up was in Australia. We now operate in 88 countries and we've got customers all throughout the world. Um, the cloud just gives us an instant delivery mechanism to be able to reach those people um, instantly uh, from our little corner of the planet being New Zealand. 
What's the biggest challenge you're facing right now? I'm thinking it's probably around staff recruitment, is it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> number one, two and three problems for us is obviously New Zealand's great in its location um, and its work-life balance and things like that, but um, in terms of talent and highly skilled people that have globalised SaaS-based companies, uh, there's very few and far between. And with the proliferation of cloud companies in New Zealand with the likes of Xero um, and Orion Health, it's really important that um, we increase the talent pool um, for companies like Unleash to be able to tap into. So Gareth, how would you characterise the culture within Unleashed? Yeah, the culture is really one of the one of the pillars of Unleashed and something that we um, value most. Uh, the employees love working right next to a beach and um, obviously in one of the main districts in Auckland. Um, but it's very relaxed. We, we like to have a very open, relaxed sort of environment. Um, everybody's sharing ideas. All the walls are whiteboards. People are turning up in beach baggies and playing Xbox or lounging around on bean, bean bags if they're working. Um, so we really try and encourage people to bring their personalities um, without being an autocratic or um, a highly um, regimented organisation. And you encourage flex flexibility around working hours as well? Yeah, we call it glide time. Uh, people gliding in and out at um, some funny hours and nobody's really watching a clock. Uh, in a company like Unleashed where we've got some targets, we've got um, some pretty important things that we want to achieve, uh, we just put the onus back on the employees to say, you can manage your time properly. We don't mind if you're working a little bit from home, um, but as long as you're contributing to the team, um, then everybody's really happy. Gareth, thanks for joining us today. Thank you very much. Let me tell you about an interesting company that isn't originally from New Zealand but now chooses to be based here. It's called Fiserv and with us Jim Tobin. Hi there Jim. Good this, to be here. This came about from an acquisition yes. uh, of, of, a, of an Auckland company but you've chosen to, to keep your um, R&D team here. Absolutely. How did that come about? We're very proud. We acquired MCOM, local company, but uh, we've grown it to over 300 people. Uh, it's our worldwide center of excellence for mobile banking solutions. So tell us a bit about Fiserv, the company itself. Fiserv is one of the largest financial service technology companies, FinTech it's called, which means we provide software and services to banks and other large financial institutions. And the team that you have here in, in New Zealand, how do they interface with uh, the team in the US? Well, it's, it's both an R&D center here in Auckland and also a center for uh, professional services work. So we'll have clients all over the world and we build the software here and then we provide the professional services to customize that software for the uses of these large clients of ours. How do you find the, the R&D style of New Zealand perhaps differs from that in the, in the US? Well, we have great talent here and part of the value is they live in a society where there is advanced use of this technology. So New Zealand has led the world in technologies like EFT point of sale. So you can have our developers walk out onto the streets and see advanced uses of mobile banking. So it creates a virtuous cycle in terms of R&D work. And obviously create, creates some good career opportunities as well. Absolutely. So. Well, we have a very vibrant young office. It's mostly software developers, testers, architects, uh, product managers. And they are out of New Zealand schools, but we have attracted people from all over Europe and Southeast Asia, and it's a very cosmopolitan uh, group for us. And, and you're moving staff be between the two locations? Absolutely, we rotate staff. We have other major presences in Atlanta, Georgia, and Portland, Oregon in the United States. We're very active in growing around the world. So, uh, but, but Auckland becomes a, a center of excellence for us for all of this. Thank you very much for joining us today, Jim. My pleasure. So we focused on some of the companies and the opportunities that exist if you are thinking about coming to New Zealand and we certainly hope you do. Let's focus now on how you go about that process, the ability to, to get a visa, the services available to migrants. And with us from Immigration New Zealand is Carl Andrews. Hello Carl. Hi. Of course there's been a dramatic change in New Zealand's approach to migrants now. We welcome migrants from all over the world, but particularly with technology skills at the moment, sure, isn't it? Sure, yeah, for sure. Um, the technology skills are in, in you know, huge demand in New Zealand, but not only, I guess, in New Zealand, but globally. So from a New Zealand point of view, you know, we're doing our best to try and attract those that have got the skills that New Zealand needs. 
and people that can help, um, you know, grow the economy. And when migrants make that decision, that commitment to, to come to New Zealand, what sort of process do they face? Um, it's, it's actually a relatively simple process. Um, people sometimes tend to think it's complicated, but it's um, relatively straightforward. They can apply for work visas, they can come as visitors, they can come as students and other um, potentially established business. There's a number of options that they have available um, to come to New Zealand and the process is relatively straightforward. I've spoken to migrants who've said that they've found it surprisingly a lot easier than they expected. So New Zealand really has gone out of its way to, to make this transition as simple as possible. It has, and um, we're developing you know, better systems all the time. We're looking to go to electronic um, in, the net, net, in the not too distant future. Um, but at the moment it is a paper exercise, but all the questions um, are relatively straightforward. It's a um, quite simple process. So Carl, if you've made the decision to come to New Zealand, what sort of time frames are we talking about before you would be able to have your visa approved? Sure, well it really depends on um, what, you know, what particular application type the person's applying for. So for example, if it was a work visa, um, an employer had offered a, uh, offered a job to a particular individual, you're looking at probably four to six weeks for that process. However, um, if the person decided they'd like to come as a resident, then you're probably looking at somewhere between you know, six to nine months from start to finish. Um, but there are various options. People can come in as visitors to test the market as well and to um, you know, come in for interviews with employers. And then if they decide, yes, it's... Um, the job that's been offered uh, is what they're after, then they can apply for a work visa onshore as well. And there are particular categories that, uh, that determine also some of that process? There are. There, there are various categories under the work visa option. So for example, if a person wants to come in, they may be working for an accredited employer. Um, an accredited employer is somebody that's um, been accredited with Immigration New Zealand, and they're entitled to bring in people pretty much whoever they like, um, who have the skills, so long as they meet a certain base salary um, of 55000 or above. And then you've got essential skills work visa, which is another option, and there it's more for people that may or may not ha uh, be highly skilled. Uh, we also have lists, long-term skill shortage lists, which is identified occupations that we recognise within New Zealand are in short supply anyway. And they're usually put together by the industry associations who've identified we have a shortage of these particular skills in New Zealand and we'd like to recruit people from overseas to fill those particular positions. What about recognising qualifications and experience? Sure. How does that process work? So on our website, www.immigration.govt.nz, there is a uh, list of qualifications that we call exempt from assessment. And basically, um, people can go into that list, they look up the country that they're from, they look at the qualifications and the um, universities or tertiary institutions that they've attended, and if their occupation happens to be on that list, um, then it's acceptable from a New Zealand standard. If they don't meet the criteria on that list, then they would have to have their qualification assessed by the New Zealand Qualifications Authority, who would determine whether or not that particular qualification equated, say, to a Bachelor of Engineering degree or Science degree, whatever the case may be. And once migrants arrive, what sort of support services exist to uh, help them in that transition of, of settling into New Zealand? Right. Well, we have what's called settlement support services, um, and it's all part of Immigration New Zealand's service as well. And it's designed to um, assist new migrants to New Zealand because clearly when they arrive here they may or may not know too much about New Zealand. They might not know the banking system, the tax system. So our support services, settlement support services, provides a whole um, lot of information that will help them in terms of that settlement process, community organisations, etc. What do you find the biggest challenge that most migrants face arriving in New Zealand? I think it's um, really around getting to know, you know, what's available to them, um, what services are available, how those services operate, um, getting to understand the New Zealand culture, the New Zealand way of doing things. And that can be difficult, it takes time. Um, like anybody, you know, 
you go to another country, you, it's kind of all new to you. So um, that's probably the challenges that they face. So Carl, probably the most common question asked by migrants is which comes first, the job or the visa? It is a common question. Uh, the the uh, job offer comes first. So for in, order, in order for a person to apply for a work visa to come and take up a role, clearly they need to have a job offer that's available to them. Um, we wouldn't normally issue a work visa to somebody that doesn't have a job for obvious reasons. If they don't have a job, they can't work. And of course you can come as a visitor and, and work here as Certainly well too. you can, yeah. People quite often do that. People will arrive, have a look around, see what they see, you know, a little bit of the country, maybe decide what region they want to go and, you know, they're interested in working in, um, and then decide to take up a role that's been offered. Um, and they can apply for the work visa onshore as well. And, and you spoke about regions because that's another aspect of New Zealand, isn't it? I mean, obviously we've got couple of major cities but there's lots of regional opportunities as well. Lots of regional opportunities and in fact we you know we encourage people to look further afield than the, than the main cities um, and for those regions too it's difficult for them so they're looking for the same types of skills as they are in the bigger regions. Carl thank you for joining us today. You're welcome. Of course moving from one country to another can be a complicated and sometimes stressful experience and we've thought of that too. Uh, have a look at this video called NZ Ready a tool to help you make that move a whole lot easier. Hi, I'm Nick, I'm from Norwich in the UK, and I'm now living in Auckland, New Zealand with my wife and two children. The hardest things to plan for the move is just the sheer enormity of what you need to do. There are so many things that you need to think about, and it can be quite overwhelming um, when you stop and consider just how much needs to get done before you can go. You need a visa, you need to get your medical records, you need to sort out education for your kids. You've got to get your possessions from your house to the other side of the world. You've got to research shipping companies and costs and insurance and um, get all of your travel insurance sorted. So it literally is a never-ending list of things to do. Fortunately, I discovered NZ Ready, which has built into it a tool, uh, like a checklist and you can go through and check off each of the items to make certain that you don't forget anything. And this became you know, my support network. It was my crutch as I went through this enormous process. The tool is so easy to use, it's almost idiot proof. So when you log into the tool for the first time, it asks you to put in some pretty basic information about who you are, where you want to live in New Zealand, your personal circumstances, if you've got kids, so on and so forth. And then it really directs the information that you need to see to you uh, and it will only display stuff that's relevant for your situation. The tool allows you to save your progress as you go through and I found myself every single night throughout the process of getting my visa, about getting the planning, sitting on the tool, working through what was next to do on my to-do list and it became something that I relied on. So I discovered the tool has a functionality to print. Um, I didn't need to use it on a daily basis because I use my laptop to keep my progress, but it came in really handy when I needed to print it off to prove to my wife that I'd done everything. I would wholeheartedly recommend that anybody considering making the move to New Zealand to look at this tool and use this tool if they can. The tool just made it stress-free, it was totally simple for me to use, um, and what better source of information is there than the government themselves? Moving to New Zealand has far exceeded my expectations. I thought it'd be brilliant, but I didn't expect it to be just this good. Well, over the course of this video, we hope we've given you a sense of the real opportunities that exist in New Zealand in the technology sectors. Lots of great companies, lots of great jobs, and a fantastic lifestyle. You really do get the best of both worlds and all of that is available to you as a skilled migrant. Don't forget to check out those job offers that are being made on the website. There's a chance to come and experience it for yourself, perhaps first as a visitor. Check it out and if you like it, we hope you'll stay. I want to take this opportunity to thank all of our presenters today who have given you a sense of exactly what New Zealand is offering and the fact that we are really rolling out the welcome mat for you as well too. Come and join us in New Zealand, come and taste our, our wonderful lifestyle and our great food and wine as well too. And think about making New Zealand the place that you want to bring your skills to in the future. Thanks for joining us today and don't forget to continue to monitor the website and put your questions forward. We'll do our best to answer them as quickly as possible. Music